that actually a great lead over because I was um, later on going to ask you about um, the kidnapping of free people of color. And uh, I know Hillary Green has done some work on the Southern Pennsylvania communities and kind of how, how you have sort of the, the kidnapping by Robert E. Lee's army during the Gettysburg campaign and sort of how these communities have forgotten about it. How much is that an issue? I mean, obviously it's an issue in Southern Pennsylvania off mm -hmm. or sure. formerly enslaved, but how much is that an issue also in the Valley itself with say mm -hmm. free people of colors that get kidnapped and enslaved or, um, I mean, this is yeah. sort of goes to the heart of like, is the Confederate army as Confederate soldier fighting for slavery, right? Right. Yeah, so you do have, I mean, aside from what happens during the Gettysburg campaign in Southern Pennsylvania, there are, are numerous instances that I write about in the book where you have, for instance, when, when Jackson's army evacuates Winchester and starts moving south um, towards Strasburg and then New Market, uh, he is not only arresting unionists, white unionists, hmm. he's also arresting free blacks and, and impressing them into the service of the Confederacy. And again, Confederates don't care if you have a piece of paper that says you're free. They're, they're judging you based on the color of your skin. And so um, there, there are these instances of free Black individuals who are being um, arrested, impressed. And we know this because as part of that testimony I mentioned earlier, you know, interviews with General Banks' soldiers, they're making it to Winchester and they're saying, hey, we're from Strasburg or we're from Woodstock. And you know we were we were captured by Jackson's men, um, and we're we're coming to your protection. You have other free black individuals. There's there's one fellow from um, Shenandoah County. His name was James Sestro. He wasn't captured by Confederates, but he feared that he would be. So yeah. even as a free black person, he felt that it was it was very unsafe for him to remain um, in his home in Strasburg, and so he fled north to Banks's lines. Um, you have other individuals, and, and to me, what I think is one of the most powerful stories um, in the book involves a free Black man from Stephen City, Virginia. It was known as Newtown during the time of the war. His name was Lee Jenkins. And so Lee Jenkins, free Black, free all of his life, um, he felt unsafe by early part of 1863. And so he sought protection with Milroy's command, and he, and he offered us his services as as a, as a detective for Milroy. So Milroy had this really um, pretty elaborate, I would, I would say, intelligence espionage network, and Lee Jenkins worked as part of this. Um, and then you get to that moment in, in June of 1863 where Milroy is defeated at the second battle, and you have all sorts of chaos erupting north of Winchester, and African Americans are fleeing, they're getting out and some of them are captured. Among those who is captured is Lee Jenkins. And again, he's, he's free. I mean, technically they're all free by the Emancipation Proclamation at this point. And he, but again, Confederates don't care. This is an African-American man. We're gonna try to exploit his labor and ultimately try to send him to Richmond where he would work on the construction of fortifications there. And, you know, several, about a week after the, the second battle of Winchester, he's being marched in this column of, of several hundred people. Um, and he's thinking about, I was born free, I've lived free, but I know I'm headed for slavery. I don't want this. And again, he, he's never experienced slavery. He's witnessed it. He could see firsthand. And he decides to, to break ranks when this column comes to the southern outskirts of Stephen City. And he jumps headfirst into a well and commits suicide. He thinks that death is his, his only escape. So yeah, you have these, these moments throughout the war where free Blacks are, are intensely concerned about their safety and they are, are seeking that same protection of United States troops that, that enslaved people are. Right. And it seems like that only adds to the incredible complexities that you have in the area of um, yeah, okay, Confederates don't care, but even for, U, for the US forces, it's like, is the individual coming into our lines a free person? Is it an enslaved person? What, what, what statues, statue do we have to give them now? Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's phenomenal to think about that, that complexity that these officers doing the Civil War had to deal with when individuals came through their lines. Yeah, yeah, absolutely.